Alright guys, welcome back to another installment of the V6 Coyote Mustang Swap Series. I know it's been a while, but we're back. In this video, we're going to be working on the accessory drive kit. Or, just rather, we're going to be working on the accessory drive. And basically this will allow me to have AC and power steering, which are two very necessary things if you're going to be driving it comfortably on the road. I guess you could drive it without power steering or AC, but wouldn't be very comfortable, right? So basically, uh, I had to purchase this kit uh, from a company called Power by the Hour. They're based down in Florida, and I believe they're one of the only, if not the only, uh, people that actually make these kind of Coyote Swap uh, accessory drive upfit kits. And so they allow you to run any sort of modular Ford AC compressors and power steering pumps. And basically, they offer a lot of options. Go check them out if you're doing another uh, Coyote Swap project and you want AC and power steering. If you guys are new to the series, please uh, leave a like, comment, subscribe to keep up to date on all of my uh, different episodes. I am working through the different parts to making this Coyote engine run in my early S197. And I'm so close. It, guys, it's probably only gonna be another, I say only, but like, it's gonna be four, four more episodes because it's fuel pump, and after that, or not the fuel pump itself, but rather the fuel system. And after I get the fuel system and the uh, all the engine uh, management wires, all the control uh, harness all wired up, then I don't have that much left to do. So we're coming to the end. I hope you guys stick around, and let's get to installing that accessory drive kit. All right, guys, so some of the things that you'll need before uh, well, you don't really need it, but you might as well get it at the same time as you need the power steering pump because the power by the hour kit comes with a power steering pump bracket that'll go on there. You'll need a alternator and you'll also need the AC compressor. If you had a GT beforehand, I think I'm pretty sure you can reuse all of those components. So you don't have to do any of this, but uh, since mine was a V6 engine, I went ahead and got some uh, modular four components. They may have been able to be used on here, but honestly, I think I just tossed the old ones already, so it doesn't really matter. So, yeah. So here's the AC AC compressor right here. We got the power steering pump. Boom. Nice and clean. And we got an alternator. There you go. All right. So this awesome pack of goodies they send a okay so this is a tensioner i believe that's what it says a uh, tensioner in here we got some serpentine belt did you guys like love popping stuff one of these stuff another tensioner a bracket and another bracket so uh the instructions what is this and more i think there's another bracket too okay so they don't have written instructions, but they do have, uh, they send you this card thing and it says all the product instructions are available online. You just gotta scan the uh, Q code right there and you should have the instructions. So I'm gonna get to that. So first things first, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna try to uh, remove these uh, two bolts here, the tensioner and the uh, pulley right here. It says the next thing I gotta do is I gotta cut the uh, the standoffs on this thing. I think it's to make clearance. So it looks like I cut this all the way down on an eighth of an inch here. Yeah, an eighth of an inch for all of these right here. So I might use the I might use a cutoff wheel, or I'm not sure if I have a cutoff wheel. I might have to use a grinder and uh, saw get my way down to the. Uh, eighth inch mark So like I said before I need to cut this little uh, thing this protrusion here out and This is all in order to clearance the alternator so that the bracket can go here and then the alternator will go right in front of that So I'm gonna go ahead and use a sawzall and get at it should be a fun time Alright guys, so I cut that relief for the belt right here 
And now what I'm gonna do is I'm going to install the, um, the tensioner down here. Two holes right here will line up with this to make it look like that right there. We'll now, uh, so there's, this, there's a bolt with the spacer right here. Now this is gonna go on this side. So it's gonna end up like that. The bolt is gonna go through this way. And then the spacer will go in here too. Let me try to figure that out. That's a tight fit though, honestly. And you know what, before I do that, I'm gonna do the, one of the other ones first. So here, we got a bolt here. And it'll go with on the other side. I just want to make sure this is in place first so I can, uh, you know, work on it properly. So I, this goes like that. The bolt goes in this way and then it's just easy, you know, normal, normal stuff. Oh, no, wrong bolt, I guess. make sure this is aligned before you do that tighten it completely tighten it so that this bolt hole is completely through so that you can actually you know put the bolt in there I need to get those nitro gloves I need to stop using gardening's gloves before <laughs> while working on the car so this will go all the way through like yeah maybe this nut will fit doesn't actually tell you so it's, I'm kind of like fumbling oh wait no psych the side nut's already in there so there you go we're all good to go and then now really all that's left is uh, actually this need this just needs to go on the car itself nice. yeah Put that back on. Yeah, put that back on. Get on there. Yeah. This, was, this one's actually kind of annoying, <laughs> honestly. Get on there. Nice. So now I'm gonna use these supplied uh, nuts and I'm gonna just screw these on here and tighten them down. That's all there is to it. Ta-da! Look at that, that looks so much, that's progress right there. So now that's everything done with the alternator. This other side right here will have the power steering. So let me get to that. So this is the, uh, which we'll call it, the uh, power steering bracket. And actually, that's it's supposed to fit nicely like that. But I'm gonna have to remove that tensioner so that it gives me room. And then they supplied. Whoops. So like this is gonna fit nicely like that but I'm gonna have to remove that tensioner so that I can have room to put this one on and then I can put, they supplied another one of those for the drive. So I'm gonna also go ahead and do that. So I'm gonna put that there for now. Now for the bracket, this uh, it's gonna actually fit in like that. So maybe this is kinda Oh, okay, so it goes around this uh, bulge right here, I think. I can get it to fit there. Yeah, it does. It's supposed to fit in here. See if I can wiggle it on there. Yeah. yeah. All right, let's get that bolt in there somehow. Yes. There you go. So I got that bolt through. It's kind of a tight fit. So that's just gonna fit nicely. Um, there, on there, cool, there you go. And that's just gonna fold up like that. And with the last supplied, this just tightens up like that. So now the power steering pump is actually gonna mount up like that, like so. 
and these four bolts are just gonna secure it in like that. So. All right guys, so I managed to get the uh, the uh, power steering pump, I almost call it the water pump, the power steering pump in. All four bolts are bolted in on each side. So this one's kind of a tricky one to show you guys, uh, but in essence what happens is you see down here, there's uh, lo bolt locations that will allow me to put these brackets in here. Basically, I need the two longer, the longer one will be down here, and then the shorter one will be up top. For the bottom bracket, it has to be in this orientation where this, these two bolts are like in front, on, along the side, pointing out that way, you know? So make sure you do that, otherwise the, uh, the bolts won't fit correctly in the um, AC condenser and all that. Alright guys, so this is the AC condenser brackets. We got the lower ones right here. The two holes are like towards the front, I guess. You angle them up a forward like this. And then this one, I don't know if you can see that. So this one is kind of the flat, the longer flat part goes on top and the hole is going to be to the right, top right of the actual eight the bolt right here. So basically you're not going to tighten this one down because you need to line it up with the AC condenser bolt so that you know it, it fits right. But then once you have that down, you, it's all fit, uh, fit right and you can tighten it down. So I'm going to go ahead and do that and show you guys. Um, unfortunately, I won't be able to show you guys while I'm doing it, but I will show like the progress I think and the midway point. Not the midway point, but like the finished product. Yeah. All right, moment of truth. Do these bolts go all the way through? <laughs> Barely, but yes, they do. All right, guys, so I finally, finally managed to get the entire accessory drive done. So we obviously have the power steering there. That's on there. We have this uh, pulley tensioner thing, right? Uh, all the belts are now routed. Uh, they have instructions for that on PBH website. It's like a Google Doc they'll share with you. One of the things was um, I was having problems with this, trying to fit this earlier. And from the Coyote truck engine is actually a ribbed pulley. So it has like, you know, the little grooves in there like the crank sh uh, crankshaft does. But you need one that's like flat so that it can go on the outer side of it. And since it's flat, it's smaller than the uh, pulley for the truck Coyote. Uh, which is ribbed, right? So then I no longer have a clearancing issue with the thermostat housing. So that's all on there, which is amazing. That's one, I'm just one step closer to getting this swap done. Um, obviously since school, it's tough to really find time to do it. But yeah, this is great. So I've also started working on the, uh, I've, been, I've been working on the uh, the control pack so obviously everything's there um working on trying to hook up everything i'm gonna be mounting this fuse box there but i'll cover all that in the next episode also i want to show you guys fuel system has arrived and this that fuel system uh specifically is made for this model year mustang okay so if you enjoyed this episode or want to just you know keep track of my progress as I am doing this on my own uh, with some help from my dad obviously uh, but um, no uh, I haven't gone to a shop yet to help me do this I don't really this is my first time pulling an engine and swapping an engine and it's been quite the experience and um, it, I think everyone can do it it just takes time and patience and a lot of a lot of effort <laughs> So if you guys want to uh, keep track of my progress, please leave a like and subscribe and I'll be releasing another video. The next video will be about the control pack. Um, I'll probably do the fuel system in there too at the same time. So yeah, I appreciate everyone for watching and uh, I'll see you guys in the next video. Take care.